Hello everyone, my name is Lachlan, I write for Money Morning and I'm also an analyst on Exponential Stock Investor. I say that in every video. So today I'm gonna to try and change it up, make it a bit more exciting. I'm gonna be talking about Zipco. Now this is a hype company. People are very into this company and uh, I'm not gonna throw shade on it or anything like that, but I'm gonna dive into some headlines, look at the charts and, uh, and hopefully give you a sense for um, what's going on in the buy now, pay later space. Uh, a lot of people are very, very interested in this sort of financial innovation. And then people, you know, kind of get worried when uh, you hear the words finance and innovation, um, but maybe they're old fashioned. Either way, let's have a look at this headline. It's uh, from the Australian Financial Review, the AFR. So it's just preliminary, but Zip is looking at doing a dual listing in the US. Uh, to potentially get U.S. investors on board for a variety of reasons. Now, it's a good article in the AFR. Uh, it's street talk, so they're, um, they're usually onto things pretty quickly. And I guess one of the things is there's a $35 billion valuation gap between Afterpay and Zip. So one of the key bits from this article at the end here is Zips trading at 12.4 times forward revenue, while APT or Afterpay is trading at 39.2 times forward revenue. So these are companies that are, you know, they've got a lot of revenue, but they're struggling to make it into a genuinely profitable business. And the growth is accelerating at an incredible pace, which is why people buy into it, even though it's not, say, you know, that traditional blue cap that trades on a PDE of, I don't know, five to 15. Um, you know, a lot of people look at those metrics for, you know, stable companies, mature companies. Um, but let's just have a quick look at the zip chart. So this is trading view, you've probably seen this before. It's a great tool. Now, what I draw your attention to here is uh, the price to sales ratio, or the price revenue ratio. There, uh, there are two different ways to, I guess, look at the valuation of a company that's not yet profitable. As you see, there's no price to earnings ratio there yet. Now, with a growth company, these are some metrics. And you know, some people could say price to sales ratio of 20 is, is a bit steep. Um, you'd want to see that maybe even the sub one region. But again, these metrics really don't help you too much with certain types of companies that are doing very innovative things. So I'll just dive into the zip chart now, look at it a bit more specifically. So I previously did a video on the buy now, pay later stocks. And uh, there are a few comments, you know, someone said there's no bubble. Well, you know, let me know if you think there's a bubble or not. I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts. But anyway, you got some key levels here. You got some upwards momentum and then it's spiked pretty hard and it's now punching through this, uh, this Fibonacci retracement level here. You know, these are just one way to look at where you could set a stop loss uh, and also just look at, I guess, how much room there is. So let's, let's dive into the three month chart. Starting to move pretty quickly from about uh, mid-gen onwards. Um, and it went as high as about $8.40 there. So let's take a look at some of their most recent announcements. Now, you know, some of these companies, they, they can be, you know, they, they want to feed the hype beast, really. So let's have a look at this. Zip cements itself as a true global buy now, pay later leader. That's, you know, that's probably hyperbole, but they've, they've got to get people excited. But let's not, let's not be around the bush here. These are pretty strong numbers from Zip. Uh, you know, a lot of, lot of strong growth figures there. Um, high um, transaction volume in December. You know, this is the online e-commerce phenomenon playing out in, in the US as people are in lockdown, unfortunately. But that's definitely spurred growth for these companies like Afterpay, Zip, uh, any of the BNPLs out there. Um, but yeah, they, they say revenue of 480 million annualized. Uh, that's, that's pretty good, that's a good number. But um, I guess relative to their current market cap, which is sitting at a, let's see here, it's market cap of about five bill at the moment. So you can just quickly do the ratios in your head if, if you want to, but that's, that's, uh, that's a bit steep perhaps for some people, but 
look, this is a company that's aggressively going after the US market and in particular trying to challenge Afterpay. So I guess these numbers underline that there could be significantly more growth ahead, maybe not at the same pace, but it'll be interesting to see how this little buy now, pay later uh, market share war plays out because I actually think these fintech companies, they're not so much competitors as they're opening, running into an open field sort of in parallel, which for me is, you know, with any innovation, uh, it's hard to think of the, their growth in terms of, are oh, they taking these customers from that company, you know, with these more mature businesses, it's more like they're both growing their customer bases at the same time. So that's, that's just one way to think about it. I'll also take another look at, uh, another announcement here. So they've got a new chair. Um, this is not marked as price sensitive, but it's still interesting to see here that she's got a background working for Westpac uh, and McKinsey as well. So, uh, you know, th this will add an interesting element to the chair um, role, uh, this person with this kind of background. And, and it's interesting to see that they're actually sort of poaching bankers now, which I guess sort of further legitimizes it. And what a lot of people don't talk about with buy now, pay later is a potential regulatory risk. Now, this, this could, you know, hypothetically take a huge chunk out of these companies' uh, market cap in pretty short order if there was some regulatory intervention of some type. But so far, that's yet to materialize. Um, but that's just something you have to be aware of when, when you're trading or... Uh, or investing in these companies is, yeah, that regulatory risk. I, I remember not too long ago, uh, Matt Komen, the CEO of, uh, of uh, CBA, Commonwealth Bank, came out and said, it looks like credit to me, which is a bit of a call out, but it's, it's fascinating to see how, you know, these, these dinosaurs, these, these dodos basically, that are the big four banks, uh, you know, sort of get in, in little fights and arguments over, these fintechs that are taking market share and they can see it coming, which is why they're investing in fintechs. You know, that's why CBA is invested in Klarna, for example, European, uh, European uh, fintech. So you can see it all playing out in real time, which is absolutely fascinating. Um, so that's, that's mostly my commentary about Zip. I hope you, you enjoyed a look at the charts, um, a little dive into how you could potentially go about valuing uh, a company on forward earnings, you know, it, at the end of the day, I think Zip will probably have more room to run given certain market dynamics, but there is always that risk out there. So just, you know, be aware of the risks, um, set stop losses. This is, you know, very basic stuff, but um, yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this, this little dive into Zip uh, and what the future holds for Zip with their US listing. Now, just at the end here, I. Uh, I want to get you guys engaged. So uh, by all means, put a comment on the video if you have any thoughts on this. Maybe I'm just completely way off in my uh, assessment of Zip, but uh, yeah, just let me know. And there's also a great link in the video description there for you. It's a FinTech report. So I actually wrote this uh, uh, recently and it's a dive into three different FinTechs. And one is, one is a niche buy now, pay later. Um, that could have potential. Uh, the other one does sort of big data analytics for small businesses and their partnerships with uh, big banks, uh, such as Bank of America. And then the other company I profile is, uh, is, is a bit different as well. So these aren't traditional buy now, pay laters. So by all means, download that, download that report um, and uh, hopefully hear from you soon. Have a good one, guys, bye.